Hi everyone, my name is Matt Pinkard, and I want to talk about praying with kids. Now Jesus, his disciples once asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And I think all of us at times are very keenly aware that none of us really has a monopoly on prayer. None of us has it figured out. We don't have the corner on the market on knowing all the ins and outs of prayer. We are constantly learning and asking God, Lord, teach us how to pray. We pray that as adults, but we also pray that for praying with kids. Lord, sometimes praying with kids can be hard. Kids don't always pay attention. Kids don't always have a good, solid understanding of the Bible. They don't understand what prayer is for. There can be all these issues we meet in prayer. And so in this video today, I just want to give 10 different categories for processing some ideas, ideas that I have and ideas that, frankly, I'm just regurgitating that other people have given to me that, that I've come across over time. And hopefully these ideas will give you some wisdom and spur some creativity towards how you can pray with kids, whether that's in your household, in a Sunday school classroom, or a small group at church, whatever setting it may be. Here are 10 categories for thinking through prayer with kids. Number one, we want our prayer to be scripturally sound. We want to pray prayers that are based off of the truths that we find in the Bible, truths about who God is, truths about who we are, truths about the world around us. And so we want our prayers to reflect that. If you're newer to praying with kids or you struggle to pray publicly, it's always, a you know, wherever you're at, but it's especially helpful if you have kind of a, a newer understanding of, of Christianity and the Bible and such, just pray the prayers that are in the Bible. There's a lot of prayers in the New Testament especially, but there are a number of prayers in the Old Testament as well that can help guide us in our praying. And so if you want a great place to start, go to the letters of Paul. Uh, his letters from Romans all the way to Philemon. There are so many prayers in there that can be helpful. Now, as we model sound praying, we do have to remember that praying is not teaching. And so you may read the Bible with kids and discuss it, but don't let the teaching time carry over to your praying time. Remember, praying is supposed to be talking with God. Don't always feel the need. I'll just say this from experience. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Four, talks about fathers instructing their children in the ways of the Lord. And it says there to be careful not to exasperate your children. I have found that correcting my children over doctrinally wrong things while they're praying, it squashes, it, it quenches their zeal for prayer. And so I found it's maybe better to wait till another time to correct those false ideas that they may reveal during the prayer time. Now you, of course, use your own discernment here. You are the parent, the guardian, or the teacher. You may know better than I do, but this is just something I've learned. And so I would encourage you to be to be discerning about that, especially if there are multiple kids. So like I have a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. And so if one of them prays something that's off, it can kind of be embarrassing to correct them in front of the other one sometimes. So use discernment. Next, simple. Make sure your language is simple. Think lowest common denominator, right? Take whatever language you may pray in a theological setting or in the church. And sometimes we have a lot of churchy words. We don't really realize how often we use them. And kids may not understand a lot of that. And so we want to try to use words that meet them at the everyday level. Words that help them see, oh, God's not just relevant when I go with my family to church on Sundays or do these other things throughout the week or, or whatever. But God is also relevant when I'm at school and in all these different things in life. We want them to see God in everything, like God at work and, and their need for God, if that makes sense. And so try to not create a disjoint by your language. Next, I would encourage you, especially with little kids, keep it short. Generally speaking, one to five minutes is a good idea for little kids. Now, the encouragement here is to remember and to teach kids that length of prayer does not equal godliness of prayer, right? So in Luke chapter 18, 
There's, for example, there, the Pharisees and Jesus warn in other places about the Pharisees in particular who love to pray long prayers. They love to be seen as godly. Look how long I can pray. I must be the most godly in this because I can win the marathon of prayer. Now, Jesus warned us of the dangers of that. Now, of course, there is a place for long prayers. But with kids especially, keep it short, keep it sweet. Remember, the Lord's Prayer itself that he taught us is very short, if you think about it. And uh, a number of the other prayers in the Bible are too. Along that train of thought, remember, kids get distracted. Adults get distracted listening to sermons and all these other things too. Adults get distracted during prayer time together at times, if we're honest. And so be gracious with the kids. Expect them to wonder. Expect them to be distracted. One night, the kids you're doing bedtime prayer together or whatever you do, they may be very just glued in and all there. And like there may be a kind of a, you know, a wonderful seriousness to it, if that makes sense, a joyful seriousness. But other times they may be laughing their head off. So they've been doing crazy stuff. They've been running around the house, playing with toys, whatever. It, that's okay. That's going to happen. But the fact that you're doing it with them the, the shortness and the consistency is good. Next, I would say reverent. Now, when I say reverent, of course, we are trying to teach kids to focus their attention on God. I do think a lot of times closing their eyes can be helpful because uh, they are easily distracted looking at other things. I'll talk about that a little more later about how we can use open eye prayer to our advantage as well. But we do want to teach them respect for God and his word. We want to teach them, of course, respect for when other people are praying um, and so we want to do that, but we want to do it in a way that doesn't say that praying is a somber and a slugfest and, or boring or like silliness or silliness, excuse me, silliness <laughs> made up a word like silliness has no, pre, no, you know, place in worship to God. You can't be silly and be enjoying God and worshiping him through that. So we definitely don't want to create that sort of bifurcation and that sort of mentality that would help them to to have this, you know, disassociation between who God is and all these other things. And so we want them to be serious about joy in God. We want to be serious about finding our joy in God. Uh, but there can be a uh, seriousness to our silliness, if that makes sense. So teach them basically is what I'm trying to say that uh, just as you can always talk to mommy or daddy or your friends and such, you should always be able to talk to God. And so in a reverent kind of way, if that makes sense. So next is spontaneous. Now we can have regular set aside times when we plan to pray, but sometimes your kids may come up to you with a need, just like they may come up, hey mommy, I just got cut or daddy and I need a band-aid or I need medicine for this or that and we get it to them spontaneously as they need it and so there can be times where we should pray like that we say hey wait let's take a second here and and pray about that you know and I think creating that spontaneous culture will help your kids to practice the presence of God throughout the day and to learn that they can do that that prayer isn't just for these few minutes at the end of the day or beginning of the day or whenever you try to regularly pray with kids it's all the time it's like breathing and so teach them that let them see that okay next i will get into some styles for prayer just just some ideas here for different ways you can try praying one would be popcorn style so say you have as long as you have three different people you can do popcorn style random turns uh, someone's going to pray and then whoever else can pray that wants to pray. Maybe you'll have like someone that says, I'm going to start the praying time and then I'm going to end it. And then whoever gets to pray between then another way you could do it is just take turns in a circle, always going in, uh, the exact order. So everyone knows who's praying next. Uh, I always try to delegate with my kids when who is praying because I find that just helps the flow. Uh, but I do try to mix it up with uh, who goes when and all that stuff. Uh, have maybe one person you can pray for. So for example, maybe on Wednesdays, you pray for one of your kids and you pray for their needs that day. And on the next day, when you're all together, you pray for one of the other kids. And I definitely encourage just praying directly for that kid in front of them. Let that kid see your desire for them to be holy, for them to love God's word, for all these different things in their 
life. Parents sometimes, without realizing it, can communicate so many hidden expectations, sometimes even bad ones to our kids. We can almost give the impression like, oh, you know, you made that, you missed that shot in the game yesterday, the basketball game, but you're going to make it next time. And we can say things like that where we subtly are teaching the kids this is, you know, my identity or this is an expectation mom and dad have for me and and put this weight on them. And so we, of course, want to be careful as we pray how we do that. But it is good for us to show them who God wants them to be in his word and reflect that by our desires for them in our prayers, if that makes sense. So um, that's just kind of a side note there. Now, two different models you can use for the things you actually pray about. One's a model that's been around for quite a while. It's called the ACTS model, A-C-T-S. Okay, so four letters there. Adoration, confession. So adoration, you're just praising God for who he is, adoring him. Confession, admitting sins to God, confessing them. Thanksgiving, thanking God for all the amazing blessings he gives us. And for supplication, so praying for each other's needs, other people, etc. Another one that I think is a little more helpful for little kids especially that I just came across recently is CHAT. C-H-A-T. The C is confess, the H is honor, the A is ask, and the T is thank. And so you can show that in four little phrases. Confess, I'm sorry. Honor, God, I love you. Ask, please, God, this or that or the other. Four thanks, of course, thank you. Okay, I, I really like that one. I think that's a really helpful for different things we can do with our prayers. Maybe one night uh, you focus on one or you do another. If you're doing short prayers, you may not have time for all of them, but th these are some helpful ideas. Prayer walking, okay? Kids love to walk, especially little kids. Uh, they typically, uh, you know, enjoy running around and they don't sit still for very long anyways and so prayer walking can be a wonderful way that you get to spend time with them and get exercise but also pray so this is a great way to teach praying with our eyes open as you go on prayer walks maybe you are intentionally you're passing your neighbor's houses and you're maybe you know some of them by name maybe some of them you don't know and uh God will use that prayer walking to, to create opportunities where you can build those relationships and, and share the gospel with them and all that good stuff. Um, but you can just walk by those homes and, and pray for people, pray for their needs, pray for salvation, etc. You can pray as you walk by businesses and church buildings and so on. So prayer walking is a wonderful thing. Uh, praying or walking around neighborhoods in different places in town and asking for God's blessing and for the Holy Spirit to do mighty things in that area. Moving on to what and who. So what to pray for, who to pray for. Well, praying for other people. I think praying with kids can be one way you help kids, uh, help the kids feel like they're part of the church. So if you have a bulletin or you have some kind of email guide or you have prayer meetings and you write down requests, Maybe some of those would be appropriate to bring to the kids and say, hey, we're going to pray for Miss So-and-so. She's having surgery this week or so-and-so's uh, family member passed away. And so we want to pray for them as they're grieving, like all sorts of things. Bring the kids on this. Uh, the kids may, they may or may not already be believers, but you are teaching them to be a part of the church. And we have to have this mentality that kids, youth, Young adults, they are just as much a part of the church as anyone else. And so this is one way we help do that. Um, so they can pray for family, other family members, neighbors, praying for mommy and daddy's coworkers, and so on. Teach them to pray for leaders. Teach them uh, in a Romans 13, 1 Timothy 2 sort of way the value of honoring the leadership in their lives, whether that would be their, you know, you as the parent or guardian, uh, teachers, pastors, politicians, political leaders. You can go down the list of all sorts of leaders that they can pray for. Encourage them to share prayer requests. Uh, maybe you as the mom or the dad can show appropriate vulnerability at times. Say, hey, you know, mommy or daddy's got this big meeting at work coming up or whatever it is. And so, would you, would you pray with me for this thing or the other? And so now 
Teens sometimes can be a little harder to open up here and show vulnerability as they're as they're going through these different phases and stages in life and, and areas of growth and struggle and um, all sorts of things there. And so be, my, be mindful of that as well. Even with, with kids, sometimes they can withdraw and not always open up. So uh, we have to be careful there without, you know, uh, frustrating them by demanding they open up. Uh, so you'll just, as the parent, of course, have to navigate that with the children um, or as the leader of, of the class, all those sorts of things. So praying scripture, of course, going back to that uh, is always helpful. Direct passages. Another idea, though, is to use scripture as a launch pad. So let's say, for example, you've read through John chapter three that night as a family or John chapter four. And in those chapters, you see Nicodemus and you see the woman at the well. And so you can think about that and you can think about, well, the woman at the well, Jesus shared the good news with her and she became a follower of Jesus after that. And so maybe you could think of people in their life, people they know at school or people that you know who you're like, let's pray for this person to come to know to Jesus. And so the text can kind of bring you to those prayer needs. Next up is engaging. Now, specifically, I want to think about how we can engage kids that are maybe a really smaller and, and particularly more antsy. And so I'm thinking about, for example, kinesthetic learning. How can we use visual and, you know, things that they can put in their hands uh, to help them pray. So maybe you use like a beach ball and pass it around. And whoever has the beach ball is the one praying. Uh, I've had kids before hold yarn, hold string, and they throw it to the next person who prays, and they think that's fun, but also shows them just the interconnectivity of how God uses prayer in other people's lives. Uh, maybe you'll have like a vase with branches um, for kids that that could handle that where it would be safe, and you put little leaves at the end with prayer requests on them, and so uh, that can be like a fun decoration you put on your table. There are so many ideas for us, for how we can use visual things to help with prayer. Uh, use their bodies in prayer. Now, what I mean by this, so for example, sometimes kids uh, can get anxious or they can get angry. And so we can use breathing exercises. And as we use those, teach them at the same time, scripture, memory, and prayer. So for example, Psalm 56, three, uh, three through four. <sighs> when I am afraid, deep breath. God, help me to put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. God, help me to not be afraid. What can people do to me? Amen. And so there, you just, you're memorizing scripture, you're helping with breathing exercises, and you're, placing your faith and trust and confidence in God. Using body parts. So when it comes to using body parts in prayer, what I mean specifically is more like, hey kids, I want you to point to your eyes. And as you think about your eyes, think about our need to see who Jesus is and understand him. And maybe you know someone who's blind to, to not understanding who Jesus is. And so, and they don't, they don't love him. They don't trust him. And so, uh, maybe you can use their tummy. Hey, we should hunger for God. God told us he would provide our daily food, right? So we can trust him for that. We can ask him for that. Their hands. How can you ask God to use hands to help other people today? Um, your ears. How can you listen to God's word? Hopefully that makes sense. You can. We can use these things to help direct our kids in a more kind of hands-on way. Uh, prayer through song is always helpful. So I used to grow up singing a song about that verse, Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, use that. Make that a prayer. Okay. Teach kids how to pray through that. Uh, go through the daily highs and lows with your kids. You can, uh, even maybe at the dinner table, you can pray thanking God for the highs um, uh, praising him or whatever it would be. And then asking for God's help with the lows, like something you struggle with, a, a test recently or whatever it is. And um, so that can be just another helpful tool. Moving on, responding with thanks. And if I'm honest, this is an area I probably struggle the most 
in my own personal prayer life. And so that reflects itself in my praying with my kids is remembering what God has done and how he has specifically answered prayers and giving him thanks for it and cultivating that attitude of thanksgiving. So what are some ways we can share what God has has done? Well, one thing we can do is just begin by sharing with how God has done great things in our own lives. So if you, for example, look at Psalm 136, Psalm 136, every line has a verse talking about, this is an awesome thing God did. Let's give thanks to him for it, for his steadfast love endures forever. And there's just that repeating refrain over and over and over of giving thanks to God. Oh, he did this great thing. Give thanks to him for it. So we can do that. Even you can say, this is some awesome things God did in mommy's life. And so let's look at your life. What are some awesome things God has done? And this is a way you can cultivate the remembering of milestones and big moments in your life um, and remembering and thanking God for them. Now, another thing you can do, remember, sometimes kids don't always keep their eyes closed when they pray, and that's okay. Uh, they're going to open their eyes sometimes. And so one thing you can do with that is say, hey, kids, look at the things in your room. Maybe they have books or they have toys or whatever. Maybe we can look at that thing and thank God for it. You know, God, thank you for my Legos. Thank you, God, for these kids' books or these uh, kids' Bibles, all these wonderful things that you've given us. We can help them to develop that attitude of thanking God for everything that they uh, hear what are you listening to right now? You hear the birds outside, or you hear, maybe you hear a siren. You can pray for somebody in the ambulance uh, or the fire department. Maybe they're going to someone's house, whatever it would be. Uh, what we smell, right? There are all these ways we can help kids to pray. Another great thing you can do is also maybe keep a basket. You have the kids draw things they're praying for um, or write notes there and put them in the basket. You can pull those out and that can be helpful as well. Maybe keep a prayer journal with your kids. This would be a great opportunity to thank God for the prayers that he's answered and to actually write them down. Maybe you can even make it visual. Have a binder where uh, on one side you keep track of the prayer requests, and then on the other side you write down when that prayer was answered or how you saw God answer it. And this would be a great way to showcase with kids and show them, hey kids, Sometimes God does give us a yes where we're hoping for a yes in prayer. But guess what? Sometimes God gives a no. And his no is sometimes a good thing, even though it's a hard thing. And so here's how we trust him with the no's. And so you can help them with that. I've seen families before take a chalkboard, or not a chalkboard, I'm sorry, like a wall in their kitchen and actually paint it with the uh, kind of paint that is like a chalkboard usable wall so you can actually like take chalk and start writing things on that wall that's a great place you can put prayer requests maybe you're coming into the kitchen and you can say oh let me pray for that maybe use a whiteboard maybe you put notes on the refrigerator uh which by the way that's another great thing to use is sometimes people send christmas cards or missionaries will send will have little uh photos that they'll send out to people supporting them and you can put those there and as you're there with the kids Stop and pray when you look at those things. So, uh, missions. Now, I think missions deserves kind of something in and of itself because I've, I've just realized that sometimes kids, they have a smaller world and they sometimes only comprehend really what's in front of them. And missions can be kind of a, I don't know, a hard concept for them to grasp. And so... Sometimes it's easier to start with, instead of praying for the missionaries on the other side of the world that they know nothing about, um, first of all, if you have maybe photographs of missionaries and such, show them that and pray for those specific people, but also just start with praying for more concrete things. Your friend Billy, his dog died. We want to pray for Billy or um, things like that. Your friend is sick, whatever. Help them by meeting them with the things that they are concerned about. And bring that over as you talk about missions. Um, one thing I've tried using is showing my kids on an app. Here are some pictures of the people we're praying for. Maybe you show them a picture of the globe. Maybe you have a globe. You can like spin around and show them the different parts of the world or pray for these different parts. Um, or you can have a map that you flip through where you can 
pray over certain places. There's a lot of different ways you can do this here. And then finally, I want to encourage you to consider ways to bless your children. This is uh, something that I was introduced to when I had my first daughter, just this idea of praying prayers of blessing. Uh, there are so many blessings in the Bible, and so we can actually ask God to bless our children by blessing them with these things. Uh, bedtime in particular uh, would be a great time to do this with younger kids. And so that's the list. Those are some ideas to help you cultivate thoughts for praying with kids. If you have any further ideas, you'd love to leave some comments below. Uh, we would definitely appreciate the engagement. And so thanks so much for watching this video. God bless.